the fact that he, over Christmas break, made a drone and flew it and crashed it and broke it and was snapping me about it, he's gonna get way more internships than the person over here in the same major with the better GPA who has a nicer suit. Like, it's just the way it works. <laughs> Everyone, my name is Kyle and in this week's video we are talking about career fairs. So just last week we had a career fair specifically for engineers right here on campus at WVU and we had about 105 companies there and I filmed it all for you guys but sure enough I found a way to screw it up. What's good everyone, it's January 31st. Today we have the career fair. Now I'm not sure how other schools do this, but my school is legendary when it comes to like setting this thing up. Like when I first came in as a freshman, it was uh, it was just okay. But by the time like, uh, by the time a few years went by, like right now, it is pretty solid. You walk into the rec and they have a full layout of all these different tables and they have a backpack check-in and they have like a photo op going on where you get your picture taken for your LinkedIn photo or some type of professional photo. Yeah. How you feeling boy? Amazing. I'm like pressed out here. Trying to get my picture. I'm about, to, I'm about to be a star. You should take a picture. So before I jump into the main thesis and the whole like reason why I want to create this video, let me just get out the way that my philosophy here may not align with everyone's and it may not be even 100% true all the time, but it's just something that I've arrived at after doing these career fairs over and over and over and failing sometimes and having success. It's just really something I believe in and it thrives on the idea of a no BS policy. So let's set the scene. It's career fair day and you walk in, there are hundreds of tables set up, there are you know, a few hundred people walking around with suits and name tags, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, industrial engineering, and then it says you know, your class rank, maybe sophomore, junior, senior. And as you're walking around these companies, you notice probably only one fifth or one fourth of them that you actually recognize like the name and the logo. And that's because a lot of engineering companies are like back end companies that you've never heard of. Like they aren't front facing like Target, Walmart, so a normal consumer could just like walk in and buy something. So half the time you don't even know what these companies do right away unless you really research hard ahead of time. And for some reason, I don't know why, I don't know why, everyone including me, they think that they could just walk in there and BS these recruiters who have been like practically doing this work for like, you know, five to 10 to 15 years, sometimes 20, depending on who they bring. And we think that we can get away with it. We think that we can just go in and just start talking to these recruiters like, yep, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, and like kind of just like spew like, just be it, just stuff that you maybe like you have done, but man, you are romanticizing it so hard. And it's got to be hilarious for these recruiters to like sit there and talk about this afterwards because they've been here year after year after year. Like they know what's real, they know what's not. They know when they talk to someone whether or not they've they actually have experience in this thing or not. And if you've been to a career fair, you know what I'm talking about. You know, there's probably one percent of the people there who actually like don't do that. And you can prove this by just like hanging out with your friends that you're always hanging out with, right? and you just watch one of them. Just watch them for a second. Watch one of them walk up there and talk to those people. They become an entirely different person. And I understand that there's this idea of professionalism and like, uh, you know, just a standard across the industry for like how to treat people, this and that, I get that. But to watch like some of my friends walk up here and shake hands and then nod their head and like, say stuff that I've never heard them say in their lives and talk about interests that I've never heard is just like <laughs> crazy to me. But the reality is I did it too, probably more than anyone. And I actually remember, I actually have a story, just I'll say real quick. I remember it was probably my freshman year and it was during the first or second career fair and I put, I'm an industrial engineer so I put uh, 5S, like something about 5S on, on my resume. I don't remember exactly what it was. I just remember putting 5S on my resume. Never in a million years would have thought this would have happened, but I like took it up and was talking to one of the people. It was actually at Williams. I'll just say it. I don't care. It was actually, it was with one of, it's Williams company, right? So um, it was with one of the <laughs> recruiters and I just handed it to him and he asked me on the spot. He looked at me, he goes, yeah, what's 5S? Go ahead and repeat that for me. Like, what is it? And I just froze up like, uh, sort, 
standardized. Like I, I named like two of them and I was like, oh man, like I have no idea. So through experiences like these and some other ones, I've developed a very short and simple thesis for how I think people should handle career fairs. So in order for you guys to grasp this concept, you're gonna need to know the 80-20 rule, which is really simple to understand. So applying this 80-20 rule to the career fair, let's say we have two categories, category one and category two. Now category one, in my mind, part of my thesis here, category one is all the small things that everybody does like a week before the career fair or the day before the career fair leading up to it. Think about everything that people do leading up to the career fair. I consider that 80%. They spend 80% of their time doing this thing. And to me that's like, getting their suit pressed, it's fixing up their resume, making sure every last grammar thing on the resume is correct, you know, all the small stuff on there. It's uh, maybe getting their shoe shine, maybe getting like uh, a brand new folder to carry their resumes in, all the stuff like that, guys. Anything that's like that, maybe last minute emails, um, showing up to, here's a good one, showing up to like these social events that these companies put on, right? All this stuff to me is still important, but to, in my mind, it, that is the 80% of stuff that people do that only give them a 20% result. Now category two over here, this category is the category that I'm saying if you did this, right? This is the 20% of stuff that most people aren't doing that will give them an 80% of the result. Like the idea is like this stuff is a heavy hitter. This stuff is a bunch of small stuff that like accumulates over time, but that's not gonna give you the home run you've been looking for. This is the category that you're wanting to succeed on and like pour your time into. Now what I'm considering in this category is all the things that you can't do right before the career fair. That's why it makes it so hard. This category to me is whatever major you are, whatever you're interested in, it's aligning those things with clubs, with outside events, with working for a company part time, with DIY YouTube projects that just show you're generally interested in what you're doing. And that's it, that's my whole thesis. Like that's, that's that literally, I think that will literally give you way, way, way more chance of getting hired by a company or getting interviews or internships or co-ops or whatever you want. Literally, it's that simple. It's all this short, like short-term, small, minutia stuff that people do last minute where they think they're preparing for the career fair, where they're really like trying to cover up of like what they haven't been doing is like, this stuff is like nothing, it's gonna help. Like, don't get me wrong, the dressing well, like of course that matters. People wanna hire someone who like dresses well and looks well. But these are the things that everyone are thinking of, right? It's like having an extra pen on you and taking notes like when you're talking to a recruiter or something. But this stuff over here, this is the heavy hitter stuff that you can talk to the recruiter about and they're gonna know exactly what you're talking about. They're gonna know that you know what you're talking about. They're gonna know that you're actually interested in your major because you're a part of clubs that are oriented around it and you're not just a part of the clubs, but you're active and you've been on projects and you've put your hands on things and like engineered things that most people aren't doing in their free time. Now I guess the hardest question is, is like, what are these events for you? And it just depends. Like if you're an electrical engineer, do you know how many YouTube videos I've just watched recently about like DIY projects of like uh, self-programmable cars or like getting a Raspberry Pi and like programming things onto it or making like a smart mirror where you like put an LED screen behind a mirror. Like all those things, they sound like small, dumb, like weird things that you just do in your free time, just cool stuff. But the reality is, is these companies, if they know that you're doing those things, they're like, wow, this person has like a real interest in this area. Like they aren't just like showing up here and like, um, just doing whatever in their free time and then showing up here and just BSing us. Like this per is a person who's in the roots really caring about what they do. Maybe you're not EE though, maybe you're industrial or maybe you're mechanical. You can still find these things guys, like you can still do these things. Like say you're industrial, having like an actual knowledge about where different industries are and what's going on, like that is, is huge. I'm telling you, the fact that James, the guy that I had on here and I did a podcast with him, the fact that he, over Christmas break, made a drone and flew it and crashed it and broke it and was snapping me about it, the fact that he did that is, that itself is gonna get him way more internships. Because he is that type of guy, he's gonna get way more internships than the person over here in the same major with the better GPA who has a nicer suit. Like, it's just the way it works. This person is always gonna be able to talk practically and be in the roots and give examples and all these different things. But let me add in one more thing. Let me say, it's not good enough to just be able to do all these things. Do all these things and communicate it and show them that you understand the relationship. That's all you need. So let me wrap this up by saying both these things are important. I just think these things over here 
are a lot more important. And these things over here are like the things you can be doing in the last day or two. But these are the things that you want to be focused on all the time to be able to get the internship and the co-op position and the job that you eventually want. And that's all I have to say on this video, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below. I'll be sure to get back to it or make a video response. I will see you guys next time. Rubber, I'm gonna burn this gasoline and set it on fire, fire.